Welcome. Thank you for joining. And also thank you to the chat manager for your help. I appreciate it. If you like the channel, please subscribe and also tap on the bell in order for you to be notified when I'm online or when I post a video. Hi everyone, hi Sharon, hi Carrie, hi Sheila, hi Ron, Patricia, Marie, well I had to skip a few. Well first thing first, uh, there is a very good chance I will be collaborating with Lina, Lina Rodriguez on the 25th of this month, it is Saturday, so because as we all know there is a major time difference. I believe it's 12 hours difference between now. I believe Lina is in Australia. So Saturday the 25th, everyone, I believe it's the 25th. Oh my God. Hang on a second. Saturday the 26th. Sorry. The 25th, I have to take my car to the shop. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I wanted to make sure everyone is aware of that. And I want to say thank you, Ron. And uh, Linda, Capi's mom, for your help. I appreciate it. This morning, uh, Biden is having a meeting with our with the European leaders. I feel things are going to be okay. Like I said uh, yesterday, uh, oh, I got to. Uh, Jasmine Clark is asking a question, so I'll, I'll be I'll answer that question in a, in a few minutes. Let me. Uh, I'm going to uh, froze the chat. In any event, uh, I feel the meeting with the uh, leaders will go fine. I feel Biden is approaching uh, the challenge that Putin is presenting to us. Intuitively, I feel like saying Biden is doing the right thing. We can't, uh, if we don't do anything at this time, Putin is going to continue. Uh, not that he's going to be successful at anything because uh, the countries that used to take part, that, that were part of the old Soviet Union, some of them have left. They've joined NATO, like Poland, and they are very well advanced right now. They don't want to be part of Russia, except for a few, but the few uh, are not very, doing well financially. They are not their, their military is not that advanced, nor the, the equipment, their weapons. So that's not going to help Putin very much, and he's broke. They don't have much money. Uh, if they had the, the, fi the money, the wherewithal, to uh, modernize and equip their military uh, members, then I would have some concern, uh, but it would take them a long time from where they are right now. I don't want to go into all the details and I'm not a strategist, military strategist or any of that stuff. So I'll just stay with my intuitive impressions. It would take them too long. It feels like to me intuitively. So it would just be another paper tiger. That's it. And right now I still feel, uh, like I said yesterday or the day before yesterday, he's getting press. He's looking tough and still hoping uh, somebody will throw him an apple or something so he can go back and play big. But I don't feel, you know, regardless of what happened in Ukraine, and to what degree, I feel like saying this is not going to help Putin at all because his numbers are dropping or have dropped considerably. The Russians don't like him. They are tired of him. And the country is not progressing. And look what's, what's going on with uh, the pandemic. Uh, he has a vaccine that doesn't work very well, from what I understand. And uh, the people are suffering. So he's in trouble. That's why he's still looking for a distraction. And that's not working either. So he's in a corner. 
And I'll, I'll answer J Jasmine Clark's question. She says, questions for today. Republican rep Representative Nunes left his house seat suddenly to work for 45. What's behind this move leaving a secure job for damage number 45? What nefarious thing uh, are they planning? I don't feel they are, uh, well, any nefarious thing or plans Trump had it's just being, it's unraveling right now in front of us, okay? Uh, I don't feel Nunes left for that reason because as you, we've heard uh, last evening and this morning, those documents that Trump took out of the White House, even his closest advisors were not aware of what he was doing, which proved what I've been saying to be correct. This guy had other plans with those documents. And somebody said something on Twitter last night, and I forgot all about it, and it resonated with me. Uh, Don Jr. was bopping again, saying that, uh, you know, all the top secret documents that he's been reading and blah, blah, blah. He was talking about top secret documents he's, he's seen. Do you guys remember, I, I, I think, I, I believe I repeated it earlier this week, that Kushner and Ivanka were not allowed in certain areas uh, when it comes to secrets. And according to an attorney, I don't remember his name, but he's, all, he's on TV quite often. He was talking this morning and he was saying even he, when he was in government, he has very, very high level access to secrets. He's never, he was never cleared to see top secret documents. That's how bad what Trump has done is. And uh, it's really bad, but I'll go back to that to answer the question. Uh, Nunes wants to be another Bill Gates Okay, those people. So he thinks that, or he's hoping. I don't remember which, oh yeah, the Trump uh, social media platform, I don't remember the name, but not that I would care about that. That's probably why I don't remember it. Uh, but that's what he wanted, money, and he thought he was gonna be uh, a tech billionaire. That's what basically attracted him, and you don't know what they told him. We know how Trump and his family, how they are, okay? They will paint a very nice dream for you until <laughs> you walk through the door and realize you've been taken. So uh, I feel it's greed that got him. Yes, you know, Nunes is very familiar with the Trump shenanigan. In fact, he's, some, one of his subordinates, Patel, used to work for him. So. Uh, Nunes knows exactly what's going on. And the other thing is, uh, he was hoping, as I'm saying this, I'm being shown this, to avoid being subpoenaed uh, while he's in Congress. Or, you know, he's hoping they will just forget about him if he gets away. So those are the reasons why I feel Nunes uh, took the opportunity uh, and he left. And he can make pretty good money. You know, from what I understand, they get paid one hundred and fifty to $200,000 in the house. And he, he can make a few million dollars a year. That's, uh, that's pretty good incentive. In any event, uh, to go back to the Trump-Russia thing, uh, you know, that's another thing I feel. I said it yesterday, and it's becoming more obvious to me and what some of the, th uh, some of the things that I'm hearing in, in the news uh, is making me feel I am correct about what Trump intended to do with those top secret, uh, well I didn't know they were top secret documents. I, I, I did, yeah, until last night I thought they were simply, you know, with that secret documents, but I didn't know they were that important. I knew he had uh, ulterior motives, otherwise why would he 
you know, why would I bring a bunch of boxes from my job, things I didn't, you know, I don't need? And then Florida, you know, it's not like, well, they can afford to pay. They, they have a huge place, so I'm sure they have room. But why would I bring something like that to my house? You know, something that can throw, put me in jail. Okay, so it must have been intuitively I feel like saying it's because it was worth it for, for him and his kids. They are all in it except for uh, the girl that's in, I forget her name, uh, the one, the other girl that, you know, outside of his wife, well, whatever. But except for her and the young one, okay, Baron, except for those two, Everyone, every single one of the other ones knew what Trump was up to. And uh, they were ready to make money and also ready to betray this country. They don't care. Everything is about them. So, and when I heard Top Secret, it made me feel even more confident that I was correct. Uh, they, they are up to no good. They stored them. Yes, uh, Don Jr. read some of those papers that he had no right reading. He's not just talking. He knows where they were, and him and his friends reviewed them. Uh, and intuitively, I feel like saying, we are only at the beginning well, we have a couple of things going on here. We have the January 6th investigation, and we have what we've just discovered. Okay, and I feel, like I said yesterday, there are more documents. There are other people who have documents and other things from, they've stolen basically, because those uh, documents and other items belong to us. They we paid them to do a job they were not supposed to, to leave the, the, the White House with anything. Uh, but I feel this is only the beginning. We're going to hear a lot more about Trump and his family and uh, his enablers. And for some reason, I keep seeing Stephen Miller. Uh, I feel he had a major role to play in this. Stay tuned. And uh, you know something else I wanted to mention this morning? Uh, and it, I, it, it's because I, you know he's a young guy, that young gentleman who works for FedEx, who went to deliver a package and he was shot at. I found that so disgusting this morning. I I, I was watching it on TV, uh, but thank God they arrested the perpetrators. So, but that is so disgusting. I mm -hmm. thought I'd mention it. And yes, they're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> That's per prediction. They have issues. And, uh, you know, Biden, Biden's poll numbers are still dropping. And I know that's a major concern for a lot of people. But for some reason, I feel like saying uh, Democrats are looking for ways to better communicate with the public as far as what Biden is doing and also uh, they are hoping they can cut through the fog, all the lies, all the propagandas that Republicans are spreading. Uh, I feel they will be able to do it and they're gonna get help. A number of ways I feel intuitively. The public hearing, okay, that's gonna, that's gonna bring uh, play a major role, it feels like to me, on the mode on this, of this American citizen regarding the Republican Party. And I read something this morning, I did not share it because uh, even if I posted it on the community tab, you, you wouldn't be able to access it because I have uh, a subscription. So, but, uh, Liz Cheney repeated something that I have said. I just realized that. Maybe I did this morning and I forgot. But she said a lot of those uh, Republicans who are 
basically not saying anything or those who are calling the January 6th committee, uh, you know, a bunch of rogue people, however they call them, okay, they, they, they don't, they don't, they're not serving any purpose. She said, you know, pointedly that they are afraid of what's going to come out about them. And she is pretty tough. She said they're not going to play games. They're going to, uh, it's all about facts. They don't have, they don't need to, to uh, any talking points or add anything to what they have. Because according to the, what she said, and I believe them and Jimmy Raskin said the same thing as well, uh, they have a lot of information that's going to have a major effect on how some people view the, the Republican leadership and some of his, uh, of its rank and file. So, uh, and that resonates with me. I feel, like I've been saying, uh, Trump is going to take a ton of people to jail with him. Uh, but yes, and we expect a lot of people also to change. Uh, and some will come out. Once this hearing starts, uh, those who are, who are hiding behind Liz Cheney's skirt will start coming out and start speaking. Uh, so I feel in some ways she has validated some of the things that I've been saying. And also, uh, the guy that goes on TV, oh my God, this guy loves, uh, let me see if I wrote his name down. He was on, I remember last night, you know, when he speaks, he's like, <laughs> I don't know what, <laughs> what kind of sign, the sign language this is, you know, I, I don't have his name down. But uh, he, he basically admitted to everything that they were up to, that yes, they were, they were it was a coup cool attempt, okay? And uh, this guy, I feel, will turn on Trump once, he's not gonna be the only one, my prediction, okay? Because it feels like to me, uh, the January 6th, Peter Navarro, thank you very much, Jen the Seeker, Taro, <laughs> thank you. Peter Navarro, uh, and it's, he's not gonna be the only one. Intuitively, I feel like saying, the January 6th commission is gonna change gears. They're gonna go gung-ho. Thank you, Tris Tris, uh, after some people. They're going to start setting examples. Uh, you're going to see people flip because everything they are saying and doing right now, it's because uh, no one has gone to jail yet and no one is being perp walked or uh, walking into court with, you know, with their lawyers and they're not seeing that yet. Once that intuitively I feel, they start seeing people being paraded with their lawyers in front of courthouses and stuff, federal courthouses, yeah, they're going to turn on Trump. And I feel like saying, uh, like I said the other day, and every time I, I talk with Ivanka, oh, major depression. Uh, she too will... Uh, she, well, let me put it to you this way. She doesn't want to go to jail. And her husband, definitely not. So, uh, and her and Kushner, they discussed this at length with their attorneys. They already have plans on how they're going to do this, or at least making plans, okay? Uh, so I feel it's a matter of time. Once, and I feel this morning, that they said uh, the January 6th Commission is meeting today. That is part of the discussion, and I feel they're gonna, they're gonna switch gears. That's my prediction. And, uh, 
also they've discussed Garland and they are trying to figure out how to present or I mean they're lawyers I'm, I'm when I say trying to figure out I'm you know I'm, I'm not minimizing what they're doing or they don't know they have pretty good ideas ideas already uh, on how to present this to Garland there's something about Garland today they are talking about but I feel like saying uh, this is only the tip of the iceberg regarding prosecutions that's coming uh, the mood of the public, the way the public is so so about this whole thing, is going to change. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, and the Trump, the Trumps will have to face the music. So uh, hang on tight. I know a lot of people are asking me when Trump is going to, you know, get arrested and all that. I, I am not sure. All I can tell you, it's coming. Because they still have a lot. You know, I know they, they've made, I mean, the January 6th Commission have made a lot of progress. They have covered grounds. It's, I mean, so much ground in this short period of time, it's unbelievable. But it feels like to me it's going to take a lot longer to go to prosecute and also to gather information, enough information about other people who are involved in this. And by the way, those truckers, they all, they, there is an interconnection, okay? Like I said yesterday, the Republican Party basically wants to destabilize this country at all costs. And uh, Fox News and OAN and all these media outlets are helping them accomplish that. But I feel that's going to be uh, they're creating problems for themselves because I feel the FBI have people among those people. Okay, They know what's going on. They are being surveilled. And all those organizations today, from the Proud Boys to those one percent who are and you know at the, sitting at the top of these uh, all those clandestine operations, uh, they will be brought to justice because uh, all those from what we see at the state level, elections, people trying to take over election board and all those things, all those things are connected. I feel like saying intuitively, and. Uh, all those organizations are being surveilled. Information is being gathered. Uh, and at the right time, these people will be prosecuted. That's what I feel. I don't know what may be, you know, but, and also the truckers, they think they're gonna come here and do the same thing. Uh, I f okay, what I am feeling is Homeland Security because they can affect commerce and make inflation worse and all that. You know, they're going to cause headache, financial headache. And that's what I feel. Our secure, security officials are going to use to dismantle them, to break them up. That's what I feel. According, I was listening to something this morning, you know, they said, you know, lawyers who are familiar with these things, since I'm not one and I can't explain it the way they do, they are saying that, uh, yes, we have the right to protest, but we don't have the right to take down the economy, you know, uh, the economy of this country. So I feel, uh, when I heard that, I felt intuitively uh, it's not going to go well for those guys. And in Canada right now, like I said yesterday, and I heard it last night in, or this morning, that... Uh, the Canadian government is, on, is in the process of shutting them down and arrests are being made and like I said yesterday, uh, seize the trucks. That's what I, uh, I feel is going to happen too. Okay. Pansy Fletcher says, Milo, please tell your clients, oh, concerning the house, that she should contact Florida, hardest hit 
they can help the use the not sure if they are anymore i i don't know where she lives i have i don't know this person at all but every suggestions that were posted yesterday i sent i emailed them to her so i don't know this lady at all but you know when somebody tells you they're losing their home oh my god but thank you pensy fletcher for the suggestion i yeah i'm passing everything to her but i don't think I don't know where she lives. I have no idea. If she was in Florida, you know, you know something? That's interesting you mentioned. You, you remind me of this. There is, well, the pace of growth in Florida is really, uh, I mean, it, it's out of hand, basically. A lot of people like myself, we moved here, okay? And rent is sky high. You think DeSantis would try to do something to prevent? I mean, people are paying 50%. They are getting, you know, are being asked to pay 50% increase from their previous year for a lease, okay? 25, 30%. So it's out of hand. People are not gonna be able to afford it. I'm not very, the only thing I'm concerned about is that I have a limit. Once they, you know, once it crosses that limit, I'm gonna have to leave, I'm not gonna stay, period. Either I'm here going to buy a house. My sisters want me to move to Georgia. I don't know yet, but, and I have a cousin who owns a couple of properties. So I have a couple of things I'm exploring, but this, uh, this is unsustainable. But the point I want them to make is the center is doing zero to help Floridians, uh, because all over the country things are changing and and also we have companies they've turned this into a business just like any like just like any other commodity they're trading and it's going to have an effect on the country if something is not done because if you if you don't me i'm a retiree i can do this from anywhere as long as they have you know high speed internet i'm happy and thank God Verizon has uh, 5G right now, so I'm really mobile. But some people, they need to be able to be, you know, have a physical place, residence where they can do, all, you know, be comfortable. And that's not gonna happen anymore. It's gonna have a psychological impact. That's what's coming next. The psychological impact this is gonna have, and it's not only, we were talking about California and New York. Now it's all over the country, so. If something is not done, uh, we're going to have problems. Okay, and I'm not blaming Biden either. Uh, uh, there's a lot of blame to go around, and he's not Biden. All right, but please let me know if I'm wrong, friends, <laughs> because I'm not an expert. I'm just intuitively telling you what I feel is coming. It may not be coming out right, but that's what I feel. Joel Tilson says truckers were funded by overseas interest. Yes, it, you know, you're right. People from this country, and also don't forget China and Russia, among others, uh, it's, there is, uh, that's why I'm saying our intelligence officials are, or security officials, that's what I said, are investigating. So, yeah. Uh, we haven't heard my, anything yet. I mean, the truck, this, uh, the trucking thing is just one activity. Republicans have a whole slew of activities. They are taking part and they've planned, they're executing right now. Okay, they, have, they are executing a whole bunch of activities, okay, to destabilize this country, to make Joe Biden look bad so that they can come back into power. That's basically what they're doing. But I feel, uh, I don't feel they're gonna win. This is, I'm telling you guys, we're gonna see how this is, how this pans out once Trump gets indicted, or better off. That's, that's when I feel you're gonna see uh, at least the direction that crazy movement and path Republicans are on. And as I'm saying this, I'm being shown a guy, I believe he's in Arizona, uh, who filmed the commercial 
he's shooting or he like it's like a cowboy scene and he's having you know he's having duel with uh, Kelly uh, the oh my god the name just escaped me right now she was shot about 10 years ago in the head uh, so she's a she used to be a congress lady her husband is a senator now he used to be an astronaut so uh, yeah uh, he some kind of violent thing okay that's what Republicans are doing, thinking their violent approach is going to scare us, uh, playing with the economy, COVID, killing a bunch of people. I mean, from COVID, they don't care. Just like the census right now, he's courting a white supremacist. Uh, and his motto is, uh, you double down, you know, you don't apologize. You know, he's into Rogan's uh, camp. Rogan shouldn't apologize. Wah, wah, wah. Let's see what happens. Uh, I, I, I will be here watching their downfall. It's a matter of time. Even their base is going to wise up after a while. Then Artis is saying, Paul Penta is saying, me to some readers are uh, seeing something tragic for some in office. Do you see Biden being safe? Biden is going to be safe. Uh, I alluded to something like that not too long ago, and I said I'm not going to go any further. Yes, there is potential for something tragic to happen, and I don't feel it's going to happen. Uh, the, thank you very much, Electra Storm. Mark Kelly, that's who I was trying to remember. Gabby Gifford, thank you, Gabby's mom. <laughs> Uh, yes, there is something tragic that's to happen, okay? But uh, no, Biden and Kamala and those people, uh, no. I, I don't feel they are in danger at all. But yes, something bad. There's potential for something bad. Let's keep our fingers crossed it doesn't happen. I alluded to it because I don't like to say these things, but yes. Uh, the potential is there. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Kristen Davis says, uh, Oscar Mitch is trying to get rid of Trump. What happened? They created the, the monster. You know, yeah, they're going to cancel each other out. Because, and you know, those of you who have been with me for, for a while, I've been watching the, the, my stream for a while, I predicted that a long time ago. <laughs> I said those two guys... And also, what we are watching today, uh, the way the Republican Party, I mean, the, Republic, the Republican Party is basically dis deconstructing itself. Did, did I say that right? Deconstructing itself. Okay. So I am thinking of detruire, and which means destruction. Yeah, and, and, and uh, deconstructing. So uh, I'm not surprised. It's a matter of time, yeah. They, they, are, they, they are bloodying themselves. That's what they're doing. And they are not looking good and they deserve one another. So I'm, 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 I have my popcorn. Let's put it that way. Okay. You know, guys, uh, uh, something, something good to put us in a good mood. How many people remember Benny King? Oh, my God. This morning I was listening to the song, uh, This Magic Moment. Amazing. So I, th I thought I would break this <laughs> crazy moment that we're going through. I think I'm going to do that as I go forward. Uh, I, I can't sing the song on here and not play the song. So I will mention the name of the artist and uh, a song that I, well, I remember that song even. I don't remember. Was I here? Oh, no, I was still... I think I was still in Haiti when that st song came out. I don't know the year it came out. But, uh, yeah. Benny, I was listening to Benny King this morning because every once in a while I got to listen to these things, you know, to put me in a good mood and to the simpler time, you know? Okay. Thank you, Jasmine Clark. They are imploding. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Teresa Baltazar, for reminding everyone to hit the thumbs up. I appreciate it, and Ron as well. Oh, Ron, I got the stuff, so you know what I mean. Okay. 
Marsha Green says, Benny, Queen, Benny King, oh my God, yes. Okay, let me see. I think somebody asked me a question. I'm, we are, oh my God, I think it was over, but I thought, I, I guess I, I did mention, just to leave everyone in a better mood, because those great artists, okay, when uh, we, we they, you know, when their songs come to mind, it puts us in a different mood. So hopefully, yes, after discussing those serious things that are going on, uh, happening in our country, uh, at least we can listen to these things and bring back better memories and change our moods. Okay. And somebody asked me, yeah, that's the question I wanted to answer. Do you think the RNC, the RNC will continue to pay uh, Trump's uh, legal uh, What's the right word? Bills. That's not what I was going to say, but I'll use bills. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't feel, uh, that's a great question. I don't feel the, the Republican Party, the RNC, is going to continue to pay their bills. Once he gets indicted, okay, everything is going to change. Thank you, Jasmine Clark. Yes, Benny King in the 60s. Oh, yeah. Uh, they're going to cut it off. So, oh my God, you must be, you are very lucky, Jasmine Clark. She said she knew Benny King. Last time I saw him was on Broadway in New York before he died. Yes, oh my God, I remember. He died in 2015. In fact, I was still, I was in Jersey. Uh, I remember till today when they announced that he passed. Oh, that was, that was a very sad moment. And uh, the last member of the band as well died uh, at 81. I don't remember his name, but yes, we've lost quite a few great people, but at least we still have their music to enjoy. Okay. If you don't like, if you like me doing these things, friends, please let me know, because I think we need some levity, you know what I mean? <laughs> Something light to talk about given how depressing things are. Sm Joel Tilson, Smokey Robinson. Oh, well, Smokey's still with us, thank God. <laughs> the temp Joel Tilson says, the temptation into the Supremes. Oh, God, yeah. Those are, oh, my, one of my favorite. Sam Cook, yes, Adrian E. That's one of, one of my very favorite. But you know who I, I love that song? Uh, Little Green Apple. I forget his name right now. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. Reinvent 45 says, try Tom in the River, not King Cold. Absolutely. Oh, my God. Well, I'm glad I got everybody's attention. <laughs> okay, friends, thank you very much for joining me today. <laughs> yes, Billy Stewart from, from C C at K's. All right, friends. Thank you very much for spending time with me. I appreciate it. Uh, if anyone would like a reading from me, the link to my website is below the video, psychicmilu.com, or you can send me an email at psychicmilu at aol.com, and we can talk about when that would be good for you to, to talk. You're very welcome, Maxine Ladou, sir. Uh, thank you, chat managers, for your help. I appreciate it. Friends, if you like the channel, please subscribe. I would appreciate it and also tap on the bell in order for, for you to be notified when I'm online or when I post a video. Uh, and also hit the thumbs up. That would help me a lot as well. Okay, friends, so listening, imagining, listening to Benny King singing uh, the magic uh, moment. This magic moment. Bye. Can't do it on, on, on YouTube, unfortunately. <laughs>